Let us pray. Father, as we look to you at this time and remember the death of your son, we pray that you will guide and direct us, and we pray that we may truly worship you and remember you in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Please take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at a passage of Scripture to prepare for the Lord's table. And if you don't have a Bible, raise your hand and one of the men will see that you get one. If you don't have a Bible of your own, you may keep this as a gift from us. The Lord's Supper is a remembrance of His death. We uh, take the bread to, as a symbol for His body. We drink the cup, a symbol of His blood. We also look at a passage of Scripture for teaching on what Jesus accomplished when He died on the cross. So turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. We're gonna fo we'll focus on verse 32, but I'm going to read uh, some of the surrounding verses. So we'll start in verse 31 and read through 34. So follow along as I read the text. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. We want to focus on verse 32. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? How did the father feel about giving his son over for our sins? Did it cause him pain? This was his beloved son in whom he was well pleased. He has an eternal love relationship with his son, before he made the world, the Father and the Son were sharing glory and love. The scripture says that Yahweh was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. That's Isaiah 53, 10. Jesus said, for this reason the Father loves me, because I, la I laid down my life for the sheep. How did the Son feel about bearing the sin of, the, the, of his elect? As he approached the time of his death, he began to be grieved and very distressed. He told Peter, James, and John in the garden, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Then he prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. For the one and only time in his existence, the Son would experience the full wrath of God against all of our sins as He hung on the cross. He recoiled from this. He knew what it was to be, He would know what it is to be forsaken of His Father. Because of the repugnance of our sin, God must turn His face away from His Son. Yet, this is why He came into the world. He was laying down his life voluntarily because he loved the sheep whom the Father was giving him. In the eternal counsels of God, before God even created the world, the plan was, was formed to redeem fallen man. So God did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all. He has given us the best gift that he could give us. So now the question how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? If he did not withhold his best, he will not withhold what is less, will he? No, he, all, all things do not compare to the Son, but we have them through the Son. What are some of the all things which the Father give, has given us in Christ? Look back at verses 28 through 30. 
We have the promise that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. This includes bad things that happen to us, as well as things that we consider good. He had an intimate love for us before the foundation of the world. That's the meaning of that word foreknowledge. He knew us intimately before he made the world. And he, pur he purposed to conform us to the image of his son. The word there is he predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. All this, all that happens to us works together for a pattern of good to those who, are, who love God and are called according to his purpose so that we may be like his son. Then in time, he calls us to salvation, and he justifies us through faith in his son. Justification includes the imputing of our sin to the son, and for that reason, he can forgive our sins. And it includes the imputation of Christ's righteousness to us, so that we can stand before God right in his sight, not in our righteousness, but in his son's. Then we are said to be glorified. The process from foreknowledge to glorification is so certain of, for all the elect that he refers to glorification in the past tense as though it were already a fact. Not one of the sheep is lost from the beginning to the end. God has prepared things for those who love him that have never entered the heart of man. He has given us his Holy Spirit so that we may know these things. No doubt when you read the word of God, you have found riches which are yours in Christ. These are things that were completely foreign to you before you knew Christ. Look down at verses 35 to 39. Here we have the promise of no separation from the love of God. Tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword cannot separate us from the love of God that's in Christ. And we are victors in all these things. In fact, we're more than victors. It says that we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Neither can death or life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor any other created thing separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We're talking about all things, and here all things created cannot separate us from this love. Besides these things, there are many others, and just a few are uh, the promise of food and clothing to those who seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the gift of eternal friends to replace worldly friends that we may have lost. The uh, promise of heavenly duties as a reward for faithfulness here. Christian, as you partake of the Lord's Supper, meditate on the greatness of the best gift that God has given us. Let his suffering be an incentive for you to turn from any known sin and pursue holiness without which no one will see the Lord. If you are here and you were, you've never received this gift of, of, from God, please realize that Jesus is the only way that God has to redeem fallen men. Call upon him to save you. He's the only one who can. And please see one of the elders or someone that you know here in this church that can visit with you about this. But please, if you're not a believer, refrain from taking the elements. Just let them pass by you. It's meant really only for those who know Christ. Men come in service, and when your heart is prepared, you may partake. <clears throat>